Hi, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Hugo. And together, we are part-time resellers. And we sell on platforms like eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, TradeZ, Etsy, Amazon, and more recently, Threado. Yeah, and normally, you'll if you followed us in the past, you'll see we source using thrift stores. Uh, things from our home, things that friends and family have given us, and sometimes retail stores like Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx. Yeah. Uh, so liquidation is a completely different beast on its own. Yeah, it's definitely a scary beast. Uh, we've been exposed to it years ago through YouTube. Uh, but again, scary beast. We didn't jump into it right away. Um, it's a big financial purchase. So we had been holding off, um, especially with our schedule uh, yeah. with our other jobs. But currently, during the pandemic, we decided to go for it since we're at home 99% of the time. So processing a liquidation pallet seems a lot more doable. Uh, so we just pulled the trigger and we made a big purchase. Oh yeah, like $3,600 big purchase. Stay tuned to see what we got and uh, how we're planning to tackle this beast, beast. of a pallet. Yeah. So a liquidation pallet is a pallet formed by a wholesaler who normally gets items that are either shelf pulls or returns from major stores. Then they put them together and put it out for an auction. And now when these auctions come up, there's two types of auctions you normally see, and that's gonna be manifested and unmanifested. Manifested means whether the item or the pallet is gonna be itemized. So it'll give you a good idea of what's gonna be inside that pallet. Those normally go for a little bit more because it takes more work or they have unmanifested, which is really just a giant mystery palette. Okay, so why did we choose liquidation? Uh, we are typically used to thrift stores and retail stores, and it's been two years since we've started this journey and we didn't go the liquidation route, uh, but with our current times and stores closing and then reopening again, we were waiting to see how safe being out and about would be for us. Uh, I have an autoimmune disease, so I do need to be a lot more careful with who I encounter and what I'm touching. And um, that also means that Hugo can't really go out and about either because he would then just bring back whatever he's touched. and. Uh, that would defeat the purpose of me not going out. Uh, so liquidation was something that could solve that problem. And we could order this massive lot of clothes and have it delivered to our doorstep and not actually have to be around other people and be in a crowded store and possibly risk getting sick. So yeah, liquidation kind of helped us pivot our business and stay afloat during this time. So big fear when it came to liquidations is the money. The money. Uh, that's a lot of money that we're gonna be spending. Yeah, and there are other ways. So liquidation boxes, which are a lot smaller amounts and you can purchase small boxes. But in terms of a full pallet, that's, that was, that's a big jump for us. And besides the money, it was getting a pallet that might have a lot of torn items, damaged items, um, stained. And that is a big fear and concern when ordering a liquidation pallet. Since some of these items are returns, um, you might get used items that have a tag put back on. Uh, yeah, and again, normally, if we were out and about doing our own sourcing, 
we normally will go through the item and make sure we don't pick up an item with flaws. But in this case, we can't. Yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get. Some items might have rips, stains, tears, um, missing tags, and you're kind of just stuck with it when you get it. Yeah, there's no return policy. Okay, so liquidation palette. We Googled a bunch of different companies and we won't disclose our liquidation source, uh, but we did Google and look at reviews and look at their different manifested lots uh, before we made our final decision. Yeah, and in this case, it really depends. It's hard to say what works for you because every state is different, requirements are different. So the best thing to do is Google your local area. In some cases, you might even be able to visit some of these liquidation places. Yeah, so Google will be your best friend when trying to search for a liquidation company that you might like. Uh, well, we ordered our palette. We won the auction on August 12th and paid for it. Yeah, right away. And we kept the tracking info on our browser and just stayed up to date every single day. Almost to the hour. We're over there like, refresh. Did anything happen? Nope, still there. And we got the palette on August 25th. Yes, so thir it took 13 days from the day that we paid for it to it being delivered to our residency, residence, home. 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 Um, but you do have to keep in mind that because it's a residential property and not a business property where you don't have a dock. Or a uh, forklift. Or a forklift, don't you know. will have to pay for the lift gate fee. Uh, so when you're paying for your liquidation pallet, just make sure that you are accounting for the price of the pallet plus the shipping plus the lift gate fee. Unless you have a forklift at your house. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't mind having a forklift. I'd go to the post office in it. Um, so in preparation for our pallet delivery, uh, we live in Los Angeles and it's August. It's about 90 to 100 degrees on average. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't really have an outdoor covering, which is where we were going to process this pallet. Uh, so we went out and we picked up one of those like collapsible tents. Yeah, the ones you take to a park or an event. Yeah, so we picked up one of those, set it up, I think the day of the pallet arrival. Um, and we also picked up some affordable clothing racks from Ikea. Yeah, you know, hanging racks. And we thought it would be a good idea because we had come up with a game plan for the pallet prior to the pallet arriving. Yeah, we wanted to find a way to organize everything so that we can streamline both taking things out of the boxes as well as running through our you know, inventory system. So we set up these IKEA racks and um, we got a lot of heavy items. Yeah. Again, and we knew the brands that were coming in. We didn't know the exact items coming in. And 500 plus pieces is a lot of stuff yeah. that I don't think we completely realized what it would look like when it was all hung up. Yeah, uh, again, and you'll see in the videos we got going on here, we prepped and ended up looking like a small swap meet store. <laughs> yeah, um, so we got this stuff hung up. Uh, it took us, I think, two and a half hours to process the entire pallet in terms of putting everything in alphabetical order on these racks. On the racks, yeah. Uh, and the first thing we did was call, actually FaceTime, our friends Denali and Laura, uh, and their channels are linked below. Well, while on FaceTime, we were showing them the items that we got. We were excited. It was opening up a gift almost. And well, the racks kind of took a tumble um, um, 
A tumble is, it's, that's a nice way of saying it. It really like, just felt like a game. Like, have you played dominoes? You know, when you like tap the little domino and it just. Yeah, so that happened. And as you can see, we got a pile of twisted cheap clothing racks. So we had bought five and we are left with two standing racks. Barely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're a little wobbly. Um, but they're there. Yeah, they survived. Uh, so our clothes kind of took a tumble, but luckily when we picked them up, they were still in the order that we had processed them in. So that order just got put in the garage in yeah, a big in pile. Big piles, an organized pile. Yeah. Okay, so we decided to alphabetize our inventory from the palette because we wanted to compare what we got to the manifest that we were provided. Um, since this is our first palette, we just wanted to see how accurate the information from this vendor was in comparison to what we actually received. Yeah, and there were some discrepancies while going through it, which is again why it was so helpful to have things in order so we can check it according to the manifest and make sure we got what we were hoping for. All right, so now we have all these piles in the garage and three working racks, three fallen racks. Uh, from there, what we decided that what we decided to do that would best function in the yeah. space that we have. Uh, I had the manifest opened up. I had a Google sheet. I started inputting the inventory while he took off stickers and, and security tags. Now again, this is new with tags and they're not going to take the time to make sure all the stickers are off and especially all those security tags. So we had to get a special magnet. We had a smaller magnet prior to getting the pallet that we had gotten earlier in the year. Um, that one took off most of the tags. Yeah, there was a couple that were a little finicky that needed a little bit more oomph. So we had to pick up another one that Denali had suggested to us and we'll link that magnet below if you're interested in picking that up. Um, and that one combined with the other magnet yeah, kind of did the Yeah, some of those had some weird finessing. I mean, you would think it's as easy as taking it off, but some of those were stuck and you don't want to damage the garment. So I had two magnets and I was doing a dance. Finessing it. A dance. <laughs> the inventory sheet that I created was one to compare it to the manifest that the wholesale provider gave us but also so that we could keep track of our sales. Uh, I have this inventory sheet with the brand, the size, all the info. And this way, as we're making sales on our different platforms, I can input those sales into the inventory sheet and we can see if we actually profited from this liquidation palette and how much we're profiting. So after we process this inventory into our Google Sheets, and hung it back up on the rack. Uh, what we did was we used a good standing rack, filled that up, and once that was filled up, we took that inventory into the house, into our photo station, and then we worked together to photograph. Yeah, now normally photographing, especially clothing, she does alone. She has a great system for herself, but we have a lot of bit of stuff. Yeah, and I normally photograph items on a wooden hanger. These come on those like plastic retail hangers. Yeah, so instead of doing the entire thing myself, he was on hanger duty and then I was on photo duty. Yeah, make sure we get that going. And that's another part of this whole thing, doubling up the work to get this process. Now, how about some highlights from those 500 plus items we got? All right, so first up, we have this Burberry jacket. This was on the manifest. We were 100% expecting this jacket in the palette. Yeah, and 
it wasn't at the top of the palette. So as we were going through the boxes, every box we opened, we were just like, is this the one? Nope, not in this box yet. All right, next up, we have a Tadashi Shoji dress, which was not on the manifest, uh, but this really pretty lace formal dress. Uh, Hudson jeans, also not manifested. Yeah. And then we got also Kate Spade dress, real nice dress. Yeah, this really pretty black dress uh, that could be worn for any occasion. Uh, we did get a few Eileen pieces. I think this one was my favorite Eileen cardigan. I think this one was like a wool blend or a merino wool blend, uh, but just a really pretty long cardigan. Rag and bone, this coat is super cool because it's reversible. Uh, when we got this, I did not know what it was because the tag was hidden inside the pocket since it's reversible. Uh, but the coat is in perfect condition and comes with the belt, also reversible. We did get a bunch of Free People stuff. Uh, this Free People cardigan was one of many Free People cardigans. Yeah, plenty of cardigans. Again, on the heavier side. And we do have this Madewell rack. A lot of Madewell. Yeah, as you can see, it's a full rack of all Madewell, and some of them, a lot of them are repeats, but really nice styles. And the Madewell sizes, I think, range from small to large. Maybe just small and medium, but it was a ton of Madewell, and just in time for winter. And we do have this giant box of halogen cashmere sweaters. Really, really, really pretty sweaters. And they're super soft. <laughs> well, those are some of the highlights that we wanted to show. Uh, we did get quite a few repeats of some brands, um, but these were some of our favorites from our lot. And we have been working extra i mean it, it, we've been on a tight schedule daily photos and listing so and repeat yes a lot of that uh but here are all the bins that we have finished photographing uh the bins range in the amount of pieces because a lot of these are thicker sweaters but we did photograph a decent amount of items in the last few days yeah. So, and what did help is again, there was multi quantity, so we did get an opportunity of taking a picture of one item, but there's like, you know, eight or ten of them. And that was also the purpose of us alphabetizing because we had like ten free people cardigans and they were all back to back. So we took one photo or we used one item for all the photos and we were able to fold the rest of the multiple items. Instead of looking for them, we have them all in the same bin. So would you pick up another liquidation palette? Uh, after this experience, and I mean, we had some bumps in the road. I'm gonna say yes. I was like, bumps in the road? Yeah, things like literally bumps, tumbling racks. I'd say that created a bump. Did it bump? It or bumped each other and then it collapsed. Okay. So yeah, bumps. We had some, but all in all, I thoroughly enjoyed processing this liquidation palette, mainly because I got to organize things. Yeah. <laughs> Again, though, that system she set up ahead of time and we ended up executing was great. And I had a good time working with her. Yeah, we're stuck even more together now. Because the <laughs> amount of work, it takes two people at least. <laughs> Um, so kudos to anyone that does this by themselves because a liquidation palette is a lot of work. Yeah. A lot. Um, but I really do enjoy having the palette delivered to our door and having a bunch of new tags items. Um, yeah. I mean, it was a great experience. It, the, again, takes work, but I'm looking forward to doing this again. Me too. And also curious, if you're watching this and if you've done liquidation, 
you know, share your experience in the comments. If you're curious about it, share your fears or concerns. Yeah, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos to come. And we will see you later. Bye bye.